So let's take a look at the Venn diagram technique for tackling syllogisms. Now, let's take a look at this example. So it says here, some doctors are teachers. Now, this is a very typical, once again, sort of syllogism that you will get in your exam. Now, how do we tackle this? What is the first step on using this Venn diagram technique? So the first step is actually identifying the two objects. So here it's doctors and teachers, and then circling those two objects. So write down doctors and then circle them, write down teachers and then circle them. Now, obviously, you want to do this mentally in your head because later on you might need to overlap the two circles and obviously there's no point writing them out again and making them overlap each other. No point doing that. So in your head, simply just identify what are the two main objects or three or however many there are, those main objects and in your head you want to circle them. So that's the first step. Now, in the exam, you will see these phrases. So some A, R, B, all A, R, B, and no A, R, B. So these are very typical, common phrases that you'll find within syllogisms. Now, let's take a look at the first example. So let's take a look at the first phrase here. So some A, R, B, every time you see the keyword some, you want to be drawing the two circles overlapping each other like this. So when you see some A, R, B, A and B can be replaced with whatever object, but for example's sake, I've put A and B. So whenever you see some A, R, B, you want to be drawing these two circles overlapping each other, one circle representing A, the other circle representing B. Now, why is it this format here? How does this represent some A, R, B? Well, obviously if we look at this, left hand side portion it represents only a so this portion here not the center not the right far right hand side but just this left hand side portion this represents just a then on the, on the far right hand side we've got the portion that which represents only b and then in the middle we've got both a and b so this represents some a R, B, or some B, R, A. So these are the possible conclusions that you can get. So some A are not B. So which part of this Venn diagram represents that some A are not B? Well, obviously this portion here. So obviously it's got no overlap with B. So just focusing on this portion here. So this portion right here, this represents some A are not B because obviously there's no overlap with B. Now the second conclusion is some B are not A and that's this portion here because there's no overlap with A. Then the third conclusion is some A are B which is this middle portion here. And then the final conclusion is some B are A which is also this middle portion here. So hopefully that makes sense. Now in the exam, you'll get a series of conclusions and you will have to assess each one, whether they follow the Venn diagram or the two premises, the statement that is given. And these are the conclusions that actually do follow this statement here. So some A, R, B. So you could possibly memorize these, but with practice, you'll be able to recognize them instantly. If not, then you can work it out on the spot as well by using this technique. And don't worry, we'll do a few examples as well. Now looking at the second one, so every time you see this sort of phrase, so all A, R, B, so we've got A in the middle and then B on the outside, so A within B, so the conclusions are all A, R, B, so like A is literally within side of B, so therefore all A, R, B, and then on the other hand, we've got some B, R, a. Now taking a look at the third one, so here it says no A, R, B. So there's literally no overlap because literally no A, R, B. So there's no like relationship between the two. So the conclusions that you would get is no A is B and no B is A. So they're just both two separate different things. Now these three phrases are the most common phrases that you will find in syllogism. So every time you see these phrases, you want to draw the Venn diagram, which is associated to these phrases. So let's actually put it into practice. So 
some doctors are singers. Now, how would you draw the Venn diagram for this? Well, the key word here is some. Now, every time we see the word some, we want to draw the two circles overlapping each other. Second step, we want to identify the two main objects. So here it is doctors and singers. Now let's put them into circles and overlap them. So doctors, circle, singers, circle. And this represents some doctors are singers. So this middle portion is what represents some doctors are singers. Now, what are the possible conclusions that you can get from this? Well, some doctors are not singers. So that's this portion here. Some singers are not doctors. Well, that's this portion here. Some doctors are singers, which is this portion, centre portion here, where it overlaps. And some singers are doctors, and that's once again this portion here, so the overlapping portion. So let's try this second one. So all doctors are humans. Now the key word here is all, so we want to draw the dartboard looking diagram. So let's write doctors and circle around it. And then all doctors are humans, so when humans is going to go on the outside. So like this. So this diagram here represents all doctors are humans. Now, what are the possible conclusions that you can get from this? Well, the possible conclusions are all doctors are humans because doctors is literally inside of the human diagram here in the human circle. Now, some humans are doctors, as you can see represented by this middle portion here. But another possible conclusion would be that some humans are not doctors, which is represented by this portion here. So we can add another one, another conclusion, which is some humans are not doctors. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, taking a look at this second, third, I think second, no, sorry, third, third example. So some teachers are blessings and some blessings are pencils. Obviously it doesn't make sense. Like I said before, syllogisms just don't make any sense, but we move, let's continue. So let's break it down bit by bit. So some teachers are blessings. What's the keyword? Some. Now, what is the diagram that we need to be thinking of when we see the word some? It's the two circles overlapping each other like this. So let's write teachers. Draw a circle around it. Blessings, also circle around that. Okay, so that's done. So we've drawn the first diagram. Okay, what about the second diagram? Some blessings are pencils. So once again, it's literally the same keyword. That means the same diagram with the two circles overlapping each other. So blessings with a circle around it and then pencils also with a circle around it. Now, what do we do now? Like we've drawn two separate diagrams, but we don't want two separate diagrams. We want to draw them like merged together. So literally all we do is literally merge them. So where we have blessings on both of them, we treat it as one. So if we did literally put them together, in a row, so it will look something like this. So when we do put them together, it looks like this, but obviously we don't want two blessing circles, so we're going to simplify that to literally teachers, circle, blessings, and then on the right hand side, pencils. Now, what are the possible conclusions that we can get from this? Well, the possible conclusions we can get from this is that some teachers are blessings, some blessings are teachers, and then we have some teachers 
are not blessings, some blessings are not teachers. And then looking at the, uh, between blessings and pencils, some blessings are pencils, some pencils are blessings. Some blessings are not pencils, some pencils are not blessings. So it can work either way. But then what about teachers and pencils? Well, in the sentence, in the two statements here, there is no mention about the relationship between teachers and pencils, so we can't really say for sure. So if you have like a conclusion which says some teachers are pencils, well, does that follow, does that conclusion follow the two statements? Well, it wouldn't because there isn't enough information to suggest that some teachers are pencils. So hopefully that makes sense. So what about this one here? So some people are kind, all doctors are kind. So keyword here once again is some and what do we draw when we see the word some? We draw the two circles overlapping each other like this. So let's draw people, circle, circle, kind. So that's diagram one done. What about diagram two? So all doctors are kind. So all is our keyword. So we want to draw that dartboard looking diagram. So we put doctors in the middle circle and then kind. Oops. So that's diagram two done. Now let's merge them together. So what do we get? We get So this is the diagram that we get when we merge them together. So we've got people overlapping with kind and then doctors within kind as well. So like in these two diagrams. Now, some of you are probably thinking, why doesn't it overlap with people? So doctors, why doesn't that overlap with people? Well, according to the statement, we can't really overlap them because that would be saying that some doctors are people. Now, we don't know whether some doctors are people. We can say it's a possibility, but we don't know for sure according to the information given. So that conclusion saying that some doctors are people would be incorrect. OK, so let's attempt this real life exam question. So no doctor is anemic. Many vegetarians become anemic. Let's draw out our diagrams. So no doctor is anemic. So literally it will look something like this. So once again, the keyword here is no. So we draw the two circles separately because there's no relationship between the two. And then anemic. Now, what about the second part? So many vegetarians become anemic. So the word many is also similar to some. So let's draw the two circles overlapping each other. So vegetarians, I'm just going to put as veg and then anemic. So now we need to merge these two separate diagrams together. Now, obviously, in the exam, you don't want to be drawing the two separate diagrams out and then merging them because obviously that's wasting time. You want to simply just get into it and merge them as you work, as you go along. So doctor is going to be separate, but anemic and veg will be together. So if we write anemic and then veg. Now here, so let's attempt the first conclusion. So no doctor is a vegetarian. Is that correct? Does that conclusion follow? Well, no doctor is a vegetarian. Well, we don't know for sure because there is firstly no link between doctors and vegetarians. There could possibly be, but we don't know for sure. So there is no explicit information suggesting here that no doctor is a vegetarian. It could possibly be that if the vegetarian was not anemic, then that they could possibly be a doctor. But 
there isn't enough information suggesting that, so obviously the answer to this conclusion would be no. So this conclusion does not follow. What about the second one? So some vegetarians are doctors. Well, once again, we don't know for sure whether some vegetarians are doctors. Well, once again, there is a possibility, but we don't know for sure. Now, this one, it says, no one that is anemic is a doctor. So it's saying anyone with anemia obviously isn't a doctor. Now, this is correct because there is no overlap at all. And it even says here, no doctor is anemic and the reverse is also the same. So anyone who is anemic isn't a doctor. So the answer to this question would be yes. So this conclusion does follow. So what about the fourth one? So all vegetarians are anemic. Well, firstly, we don't even need to look at the Venn diagram because it says here many vegetarians become anemic. Now, all vegetarians is a bit extreme. So obviously this conclusion doesn't follow at all. So we put no. And the last one, an anemic vegetarian cannot be a doctor. So obviously an anemic vegetarian cannot be a doctor because they're anemic and no doctor is anemic. So we put, so this conclusion does follow. So hopefully that makes sense.